Alrighty guys and welcome back today. We're gonna to be looking at the clown and why I put him in the 14th Best spot in Dead by Daylight. Now you guys might be wondering why I said 14th so dramatically I just literally was recording a video and I said it was 4th percent or 4th best. He's 14th best I would love him to be 4th best, but he's 14th. All right, let's get into it I would love to put the clown higher on the tier list, but I can't unfortunately I'm basing all this off no add-ons on a very bad map against good survivors Possibly a swift in the red and purple ranks currently. We're looking at ruin You might be sick of hearing me say it, but let's do it again Ruin allows you a survivor to land a good skill check with a penalty not just missing a skill check If a survivor lands a good skill check 5% of uh, the generators completion will get regressed Therefore if a Jenny is at 80 seconds all the way nearly completed and a survivor lands a good skill check, it'll go back 5%. 5% at 80 is 4. Therefore, the generator will go back 4 seconds. It can be very devastating because once a survivor misses a grade and lands a good, if they miss the actual skill check altogether, it gets another 2-3% penalty as well. So it'll go back about 6-7% rather than just 5. This being said, uh, you're looking at if a survivor misses a skill check and lands a good, not a great, because they have to land that little small bit in the red skill check. Uh, this generator will go back 4 seconds or 5%. And then it will stall all productivity for 1.5 seconds. Two people on a Jenny, doesn't matter. Jeff misses it. David's now gets no work done for the next 1.5 seconds. So you'll see a lot of people work on a Jenny. They'll miss a skill check and they'll let go of the Jenny to start the generator again. I don't know why they do that. It takes about 1.5 seconds to let go of a Jenny and start again. It might be a tiny bit quicker. That being said, keep these kind of things in mind that if you're missing a skill check, etc. Skill checks are random, so letting go of a Jenny, you could get a skill check straight away. You know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. The next perk you guys see and know I love so much, it is called Pop Goes the Weasel. This allows me to down a survivor. Once the survivor is downed and I pick him up and I hook him, after he is successfully placed on the hook, he will have 60 seconds before he hits struggle. If he's in struggle, he'll have 60 seconds before he dies. If he has already hit struggle, he will be be dead on hook. Regardless, I will receive a buff. The buff will allow me to kick any generator that has been worked on. Uh, I will do 25% damage of the generator rather than 1% of the damage. Doing 25% of a generator almost done at 80, sec uh, 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 at 80 seconds is going to take 20 seconds off a generator. Taking 20 seconds off a generator is going to help you a lot, putting it down to 60 seconds, and now it's going to have red sparks flying out of it. So people are going to know you have Pop Goes the Weasel rather than the white sparks coming out of it. Very powerful, providing you can catch and down and hook survivors. I almost always run this perk, regardless. I recommend it highly when you're running things like Devour Hope, and I recommend Thrilling Tremor as well if you're not running Ruin. This being said, I'm running it with Ruin on this build too, because I feel this killer lacked Luster's a lot of power and pressure, so I'm kind of running a very, very heavily strong build on this guy, just to try and excel the fact that he's very, very weak. The next perk is Thrilling Tremor. Now, Thrilling Tremor entwines perfectly with Surge, and let me explain to you why. Thrilling Tremor is when you down a survivor and pick the survivor up, all generators will now glow white, and no survivor will be able to work on them. The Entity's Grasp will come out and hold them, much like if you were versing Corrupt Intervention. There will be, you know, the claws going around generators. However, if you are already working on a generator, the Jenny will not seal. Therefore, the killer will know which generator you're on. You do not have to hook the survivor. You can pick him up, look around, and see a generator that doesn't have somebody on it I mean that doesn't have uh, that isn't white and it could be, will be the normal color drop the guy and go straight over there however if you pick him up and you hook him now I have pop goes the weasel I can go towards whichever generator I feel somebody is working on if the Jenny isn't glowing white then I know somebody's working on the generator or was working on it when I picked up the survivor this perk here entwines god tier like with this perk now let me explain why surge when you down a survivor all generators will explode within 32 meters, regressing at 8%. Uh, for talking sakes, we're going to round it up to 10%. 10% of it, 80, is 8 seconds off a generator nearly completed. So the survivor misses a skill check and it blows up, much like overcharge. However, do keep in mind there's a little bit of a bug with Surge right now, which hurts the perk. If a survivor misses a skill check, they blow back and they keep working on it. Unlike Infectious Fright, if a survivor goes down while another survivor is working on a Jenny, they let go of the Jenny and they grab the head like as if they were to madness tear up. So keep that in mind that a survivor does not let go of a Jenny when they blow the Jenny. Which hurts. If they did, this wombo combo would be way too overpowered. So the powerhouse thing here is the Jenny will blow and will be regressing. You just down Jeff. Now you go over to get the guy because he's on a generator right beside you. Or you don't. You now pick the other guy up and you go to hook him. The Jenny will still have red sparks in it. Okay, this is the bug I'm talking about. A Jenny will still have red sparks. This is both good and bad. Why? So the survivor's working on a generator. I just down Jeff. Jenny blows. Survivor stays on the Jenny. 
Jenny will still be worked on and have regression. Survivor lets go of the Jenny and runs away. That will still have red sparks because of uh, Surge, but that will still be regressing. So that's both a beauty and a curse. The survivor to counter that needs to let go of the generator and work on the generator again. But if he chooses to do that, I have Pop Goes the Weasel. So that little bit of a bug could be very devastating, okay, in terms of bad or good. Hopefully it gets patched sooner rather than later. But the issue behind this is if I just down Jeff and the generator blows and I pick up Jeff, now that Jenny's going to be regressing for 16 seconds because nobody can work on it for 16 seconds, at 1 to 1.5% 1 per second. So Jenny's going to go back huge amounts, plus it went back 8% of what was worked on. That would be perfect. That's in the perfect situation. Not in the perfect situation. I down Jeff. David stays on the Jenny. I run over to David. David runs away from the Jenny. I now pick Jeff up. I hook Jeff, and I go to kick the Jenny with Surge. I, uh, with Surge with Pop. I can't kick the generator. I need to go across the board. The perfect scenario is Jeff's working on a Jenny. Other people are working on Jennies. I down Jeff. I pick Jeff up, the Jennies blow elsewhere, survivors might let go of the Jenny, survivors might not let go of the Jenny. I hook this guy, I've now got regression, 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 and I can go across the board with Pop Goes the Weasel. That's what makes this killer a lot stronger with this kind of build, okay? The fact is, I don't need to individually check every freaking generator. If I know it's within 32 meters and it doesn't explode, it means the generator is 0% worked on. I have no reason to go there, I know there is no survivor over there. That also being said... Thrilling Tremor is going to tell me there's no survivor over there. The whole build premise is about not wasting time. Being as efficient and effective as possible. You have nothing to help you in chase. Nothing. You don't have bamboozled. You don't have uh, brutal strength, enduring. You need to understand your jungle gyms. If there is a pallet here, there is a window here. If there is a just a pallet, no window. Can you throw a bottle in mind game, twist, hide your light, flick your camera, do a 180 and make him step in your bottle? There's a lot of plays that need to be keeping in mind when you're playing the clown. If it's a god tier jungle gym or a really good jungle gym, walk into it. Eat the pallet. Eat it, break it, rotate. If it's a shit jungle gym, I can understand if you want to do a mind game. If you already have Bloodlust 2, I can understand why you want to do a, blood, uh, a mind game. You should not be chasing more than 15 seconds without hitting a survivor or getting a pallet. If you are, you've made a mistake. You do have brutal, uh, you do have Bloodlust, and you just need to either run straight at him and eat a pallet, or leave. You need to do one or the other. If you can't get value for 15 seconds, you're making a mistake, and it could cost you the game. If you're chasing Jeff, what do you think the other three healthy survivors are doing? Think of the worst case scenario. You don't have to score it. It's they're all on three different generators and they're about to pop three jinnings simultaneously. In another situation, Jeff's on the hook, David's on the floor, you're chasing Claudette. What do you think Megan's doing? If she chooses to do a generator, how many jennies are left? Do you have two? Do you have three? Do you have one? You have two jennies left? Okay, she can't finish the game right now. It's impossible. She needs to come in. So just value that. You know, you have one jenny left. She can finish the game. Maybe let go of the chase on that guy and check on your gens with your pop. Thrilling Tremor. Pick up the guy from the ground to use Thrilling Tremor to know if Megan's on the Jenny. So you can make the build work really well, but it does require a lot of thinking involved. Alternatively, I'm a big fan in a lethal clown, okay? So I've ran this build on my spirit, and it works like an absolute charm. Running it on the clown is, at the end of the day, a bit of a gamble. Don't get me wrong. But I have a lot of fun when I'm running this build. I mean, a lot of fun. As opposed to the other build, it can get frustrating if you're trying to beat the, a good Swift. This build is all about having a good time. You don't have Ruin. You can get Gen Rushed pretty easily. But at the same time, you got Devour Hope. you got Horn of Ground. you got Thrilling Tremor. And you got Pop Goes the Weasel. So this is going to work really well for you. You know, they break your Horn of Ground. You down somebody. Now you pick them up with Thrilling Tremor. You know, you could, you could really see the value and power behind it. You know, they break Devour Hope. That sucks. They don't break Devour Hope. Now you're in a good spot. By the time there's two or three gens left, you've got three stacks of Devour Hope at least. You know, you've got Pop Goes the Weasel for some form of regression. you got Thrilling Tremor for situational awareness. Better version of Barbecue. You need Tremor over Barbecue. You need it. Especially because you've got Devour and Haunted. You don't have Ruin. You don't have Discordance. You don't have Corrupt Intervention. You don't have nothing to stall. This here is what's going to allow this to get maximum value. You cannot afford to go to a Jenny that doesn't need pop while they're working on two other gens that needed pop. You will lose those two gens and your whole game will go. Very fun, very exciting, requires a lot less thinking, especially when you're running Tremor. So God bless the devs for bringing Tremor out. It's one of the best perks in the game. But at the same time, 
there are other builds you can run, right? The classic clown used to throw a bottle at you and then hit you with save the best for last, follow you, save the best for last you through the, the clown smoke. Now, I haven't even spoken about the clown's ability, right? The clown has four bottles by default. When he pulls a bottle out and charges it, he does not slow down. When he releases the bottle out of his hand, he, he will slow down and move at speed. Now, basically, the clown throws a bottle like a loop up and down. So to throw it straight, you need to look down a bit to throw it directly straight. When the bottle hits the ground, it'll make a smashing sound. All survivors in it will receive a penalty. Calm spirits means you will not scream. If you don't have calm spirits, the survivor will scream when they touch the smoke. Okay? The smoke will lie on the ground for about three seconds. Stepping in the smoke or being in the smoke will give you a penalty which will cause your vision to be very blurred. That being said, when you leave the smoke or you stay in the smoke, you will have a 15% movement speed penalty. Leaving the smoke, the penalty will stay on you for two seconds. It will not it, it will not allow you to fast vault, but you can still medium vault with momentum. So when they buffed medium vaulting a little while ago, that kind of hurt the clown a lot. Nobody mentioned that. I was a clown main back then, and it kind of like broke my heart, but... That is okay. So the clown does have some cheeky add-ons. He's got things like the Solvit Jug, the Glass of Bleach, and Ethel. Alright, so let's have a look here. The Cork is actually really good too. This is going to allow you to reload faster. You slow down dramatically when reloading. So the way you play clown is basically, it should cost you one bottle per jungle gym. Realistically. If you directly hit a survivor with a, a bottle, they stop their animation. Survivor's about to hook save somebody and you're 10 meters out. You throw a bottle, you hit the survivor, he stops his animation. Now you're 4 meters out. You can make it work. Save the best for last is God tier on the clown. Old school clown used to run Ruin, Enduring, Spirit's Fury, Save the best for last. It was strong, but when you lost Ruin, you were going to get gen rushed 9 out of 10 times. It was very, very powerful because you can almost guarantee walking into a, a pallet with the clown. You throw a bottle, you know, you don't even need to hide your light or anything. They're not going to get more than one loop. You just walk right in, you get pallet stuns, you break it. It can be decent if you know when to let go of chases as opposed to committing to a tunnel, but at the same time, you are susceptible to gen rushing, which you got to keep in mind also. But I mentioned the Flask of Bleach. This is going to allow the penalty from not being 15% slow to 20% slow. Now Survivor's moving at 80% and you're moving at 115. Big difference there. Big difference. You can catch Survivor's a hell of a lot easier when you're 35% faster than them. I mean, that's bigger than three stacks of uh, play with play with your food. Pretty much when you're looking at the, uh, the value. Um, you've got... You know, the pinky finger and the middle finger. I'm not going to go into too many details about them. We're talking about low tier add-ons here. Uh, solve it, Jug. It's going to give exhaustion. Now, if survivors know you have it and you go to throw it, they're just going to instantly dead hard. It's fine. They waste dead hard straight away. Very, very, very powerful perk for... Uh, not perk. Very powerful add-on for the fact that it's only yellow. Basically, 30 seconds, a survivor won't be able to use balance landing, won't be able to use anything. It just forces cooldown on it. But the main... Main important thing I want to point out here is Ether 10 and Ether 15%, okay? These two and this is his best combo, okay? Now, you might be wondering why. You've got things like the pinky finger and the middle finger, which gives you exposure if you directly impact. Sure, okay, realistically, that is better, providing you're not running this build. You're running, you know, like a different build. Sloppy Butcher can be really good on the clown too. Keep that in mind. Um, I don't like Bamboozled on him anymore. But this being said, we're having a look at Flask of Bleach. So it reduces movement speed by additional 5% for 2 seconds. Now the hinder is eight, uh, 80% for 2 seconds. Now something really silly that I need to point out, it's always been a pet peeve, is this here. Ether 10%. Ether 15%. This hinders a survivor for an additional 0 0.5 seconds. This hinders a survivor for an additional 1 second. Shouldn't that be Ether 7.5% and this should be Ether 15% or shouldn't that be Ether 10% and that be Ether 20%? Because the difference between here is 0 0.5 seconds. So having this on means when they leave the smoke or the smoke expires, they are slowed for 3 seconds, not 2. This means they're slowed for 2.5 seconds instead of 2 seconds. So that additional 1 second or 0.5 of a second is massive when you're moving... 35% faster than a survivor. It is huge. It's going to allow you to M1 through a lot of pallets, a lot of windows. It's going to allow you to get a lot of crazy shit off. But there's some of the add-ons we're pointing out. If we're going to go back into looking at his build, I do not recommend Corrupt Intervention on the Clown. I find him 
I find it too weak for uh, value out of him. I do highly recommend Surge. You do have uh, Save the Best for Last, like I was saying before, as a good option. So let's make your choice. Um, this here is a very devastating build too. I recommended this build on uh, for another player at a point in time. But um, it looks like we uh, lost internet, guys. So that's going to be all for the clown build. And this is why I put clown in, unfortunately, the 14th spot for best killer in the game. If you guys have any questions about DBD, don't hesitate to come over to the live streams and check out um, to find out more information about the clown, guys. So uh, have a wonderful day and uh, cheers.